We discussed in our last segment the video that Donald Trump posted where he tried to clarify his stance on abortion rights and in so doing upset everyone. <laughs> he had conservatives in his party upset with him. He had the majority of the country, if they hear about this, upset with him because he is reminding people that he is to blame for the horrific things we've been observing across the country thanks to the overturning of Roe v. Wade, which he's responsible for through the justices he got on to the court. And he stated that very loudly and proudly while also not going far enough, not extreme enough for many in his party and not calling for national abortion ban. So across the board, he both brought this conversation very prominently into the discussion when it comes to him v. Biden, while also making everyone unhappy, even those within his own party. So it's a delight to see, and we have to make sure people remember the role that Trump played and just how responsible he is in the horrific outcome we've seen since the overturning of Roe v. Wade. So with that being said, I already talked about some responses, Lindsey Graham upset with him and the President Joe Biden response. Now I wanna talk about some of the media's response from Fox News first, then we'll get to MSNBC. Fox News, uh, Sean Handy specifically has been one of the people who's not upset with Trump for not going far enough in the minds of some conservatives and instead is panicking. And we've seen this over the course of the last few months with Sean Handy. He's panicking that this issue is going to cause a brutal electoral result for Republicans in November, as we've seen happening in the last few years because of reproductive freedoms and the projection from the majority of Americans. Uh, to the horrific actions being taken by lawmakers across the country. And so Handy has been begging and pleading in interviews we've discussed here, just in a conversation with Lawrence Jones, and pleading with Republicans to moderate themselves and sounding the alarm that if we keep in this direction, the writing on the wall is we're going to get trounced. And it's very interesting to see. So here's this. I will just note because once you, once I heard it, I couldn't unhear it. So I'm going to make you experience that while you listen to this. He's breathing very strangely um, and seems to be struggling. So I don't know. Any Republican that would ever take a position, and the president was clear in his statement on this too, any Republican that would take a position, no exceptions for rape, incest, or the mother of his life, that is political suicide. Yeah, it is. I'm going to really quickly pause your viewing of this video to ask you to subscribe to the YouTube channel. Just click that subscribe button plus the like button as well and the alert bell so you get notifications. Back to it. Any Republican that calls for a flat out ban politically, I'm talking politically now, that would be outright suicide. But I'll tell you one thing, and this would be an admonition for any conservative or any Republican running, is that is if you're going to take that extreme position, you are going to lose votes. If you want to change the country and if you want to close the borders and you want to turn this this disastrous economy around and you don't like what's happening with war in Europe, war in the Middle East, America ostensibly has abandoned our ally Israel under the Biden administration. If you are are sick and tired of defund, dismantle, no bail laws, etc. This election means everything. Now, any ad that any Republican in any district is running on abortion needs to be answered forcefully, immediately by any Republican candidate. If they don't do it, they are going to be positioned by the Democrats and likely lied about and demagogued about. But I, I thought the president was smart to get out in front of this. It's going to be a big issue. My opinion is the red wave. That so I'll play more of this from Sean Handy in just a second. But first, to respond to what he said so far obviously i don't even need to waste time because i've done it so many times the open border stuff and the economy stuff and the uh i guess biden hates law and order sort of talking points as maga republicans say they want to defund the doj and fbi for retribution for daring to go after donald trump so just set all that aside but the point he's making is if we want to win even if it's going to be attempting to win through lying but if we want to win then we have to have a better message on the subject of reproductive freedoms, which is true. That is something they would have to correct to have better electoral outcomes. Uh, hopefully, they'll just be transparent and just to be honest about how bad their positions are, and then people will vote against them correctly. So, uh, but Sean Hattie is one of the rarer people out there saying it like this, and I think it's because he genuinely wants Republicans to win 
Does that make sense? I think a lot of media personalities don't actually care and they're just sort of playing this conservative role. I think Hannity actually wants Trump to win and actually wants Republicans to do well. And so he's just begging them to stop shooting themselves in the foot. And thus you get rhetoric like this. Here's a little bit more. My opinion is the red wave that many expected in 22 didn't happen because of this issue. A case in point would be Doug Mastriano. He was at the top of the ticket. He was running for governor in Pennsylvania. He lost by the largest margin to a non-incumbent Democratic uh, uh, Governor Shapiro than anybody since the 1940s. He He didn't even have exceptions for rape, incest, or the mother's life. Don't run from the issue. Deal with it head on. President Trump, I think, led the way today for Republicans to deal with that issue. Now, I think separate from just the interesting political analysis of look at how powerfully the country has spoken already, even before November, and thus you have conservative pundits saying, oh, we're going too far. This is bad for at least politics. And that's an interesting political analysis. But the most important takeaway is Americans don't be duped because Trump does the same thing. We got to win elections and then I'll do the perfect thing for you when he was asked by pro-life Americans what he's going to do. And Sean Handy here isn't saying Republicans don't be so extreme in your actual governance and policy. It's really just about rhetoric and messaging. And so don't allow their record to be distracted from with a new uh, altered message. We saw this with a culture of life, I think it was, that was focus group. And they started saying, instead of pro-life, we're for a culture of life, I think. I'm pretty sure that's what it was. And the point I made back then was, however you change the language, it's the policies that people have a problem with. So as voters, we can't allow the rhetoric to distract from the record. And that's the important thing. And what Trump did so wrong in that video, just from a political strategy standpoint, was remind multiple times Americans while he's trying to articulate his stance on abortion rights and trying to make it seem less extreme compared to some other Republicans. He goes, I'm the guy, woohoo, I'm so proud that I caused the overturning of Roe v. Wade through the justice I got on the court. And that message now loud, proud out front is one that will damage him uh, very severely politically. And so then my request, now I'm the one begging and pleading, is don't forget that. America. (laughs) And I'm speaking to you all. You all, please go share this message with the people who might forget. I don't think you'll forget because I'm going to make sure you don't. But anyone who might, and I've definitely been noticing that, as I said in the last segment on this, people forgetting the role that Trump played in causing a domino effect that led to all these different laws being implemented. And so he should be held accountable for that electorally. And people who clearly care about this issue can't forget to care about it when it comes to this November presidential election, not to mention down ballot as well. And so before I play this next clip from uh, MSNBC in this case, it is fascinating the shift in tone we're seeing, at least from Hannity here and others, noticing where the pulse is in the country on the subject. They are wrong. The majority is correct on this one. And then the most important takeaway that we have to make sure people understand as we discuss this potential shift in tone is don't forget, don't forget, don't forget. Okay, with that being said, here is some interesting analysis from Joe Scarborough and Mika Brzezinski on Morning Joe. Mm -hmm. You know, Mika, what what he just said, I'm really surprised. I thought he'd try to weasel out of it a little bit more than he did. (laughs) <laughs> uh, what he just said was he supports like Florida's six week ban. Yep. Six week ban. Well, uh, ban before insane. women insane. Before women know whether they're 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 pregnant or not. Dangerous. Uh, and bans like Wisconsin had, you know, those eight that eighteen forty nine was total ban. I'm not sure if it's still in effect now, but there are again crazy extreme laws that have been passed that Donald Trump just said he supports and he salutes and said, I'm responsible for that. Yeah, he's proud of it. And Democrats should uh, drive that message home because for women, this is a matter of life and death and the men who love them. 
I mean, these laws, depending on how they differ in different states, just muddle the medical journey that is already a nightmare for women when they're on it, when they have a yeah. pregnancy that has complications or they have questions or they have a situation that is dire. They're left with the choice of being sterilized, bleeding out, or giving birth to a baby that won't live more than a matter of minutes, and going through the emotional trauma, let alone being sterilized by that. You can thank Donald Trump for that. And Democrats need to make sure that they understand that they got to get the message out across the country, especially to Republican women. And, and that's it. That's it right there. What some people are taking away, the conservatives for sure are, from Trump's statement is, ah, he's against the national abortion ban. Thus, maybe he's trying to be more moderate on this. What he said in that video was, I'm the one you should blame for the overturning of Roe v. Wade because I'm proud of it. Thank you to the justices. And thus, I, and then he listed off, you know, and states are doing what they want to do. And sometimes you can do more conservative stuff. And then is essentially taking credit for the fact that all those states he is all those states are now doing what we're seeing them do and what is disturbing and destroying so many people and so the message has to be from democrats donald trump is responsible for all of that now so are the people implementing these laws specifically but trump at the top of it allowed for this domino effect to happen and that is true and an important and effective message because he's saying yeah states because of me because of what i was able to do and getting these justices on the court states are able to make their decisions and some states led by leaders that i like more uh, are doing horrific things and that wouldn't be happening if it weren't for me. That's the message from Trump. Democrats need to make that clear. And the interesting thing about these discussions is among this audience, I think a lot of us go, yeah, obviously, what, what else are people thinking? It's unfortunate, but a lot of people aren't really even engaged in this election yet. And as they engage, hopefully the loud, clear message that they're hearing is what we just discussed. Right. And as unlikely as this seems, if you're an avid political consumer, these subjects can get missed as people do re-engage and get ready to vote. It can be missed just how consequential Trump was. It can be missed just how existential this election is on this issue and others, uh, namely democracy. And so it has to be repetitive. It has to be loud and clear. And hopefully people will get the message and vote accordingly. Uh, please make sure you are subscribed to this channel. Let me know what you thought of all that in the comments.